Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Another one outside in the sun. I'm out here rowing, Julie's away out for a bike ride, it's just amazing. Anyway, today what we're going to do is we're going to do one of our recovery, kind of slower, longer rows. We're going to do 40 minutes and we're going to go up and down some stroke rates. So we're going to go 18 strokes, then 20, 22, 20, 18, and then we're going to do that all over again. Okay, we're going to change every four minutes. Do the maths, that means that it's 40 minutes. Isn't that amazing? Pace wise, you're gonna do the 18s at 2K plus 20, and then you're gonna do the 20s at 2K plus 18, and the 22s you're gonna do round about 2K plus 16. Now, you don't have to hit them bang on, okay? Now, I've just had two tough days in a row where I've done, I did session one twice. So I'm a little bit tired. So if I want to back off a couple of seconds, slow down a little bit, then that's fine by me. And it's the same with you. This is about a recovery row, about building up that base fitness and about allowing you to then be okay to do the top tier workout the next day, okay? So there's no point you rowing on and exhausting yourself today and then not being able to hit the top tier workout when it comes to that, all right? So let's get into our four minute warm up now as always we start off by setting up our drag factor so that's the lever on the side of a concept two set it where you want it to be i've current i'm currently rowing around about 115 you might want to set it somewhere else if you're on a different machine just set the weight of the stroke so it's enough that you get a good kind of weight out of it but you're not having to really fight against it then go to the monitor and set it to eye height so you're not looking up or down and finally the foot straps or foot stretcher height should be set to a point where you're able to come to the front of the machine with your shins pointing vertically um but you, and you're not kind of feeling like you can't quite get there and your feet are all gnarled up or that they're so low that you're flying all the way into the front of the machine. Okay, so four minute warm up, 18 strokes a minute we're going to do this at and your pace is going to be kind of pretty much like a body weight squat which is like, yeah, like a squat without a weight across your back. Okay, so it's just because we're going to start off by working on timing. There was flannelling there to fix my microphone strap. Here we go then, in three, two, one. So what I mean is you're just connecting your feet into the foot plate for the time being, just to make sure you're putting in some kind of power. And then you're working on that point when the handle connects to the flywheel or the water wheel or whatever you're using. So what you want is that foot press to happen at exactly the same time that the handle connects. And that way, the power from your feet will transfer into the machine. If you push too early, then your backside will scoot backwards and you'll lose loads of power and you'll suddenly feel a jolt of your hands as they pick up the flywheel without the backup of power from your legs and if you pick up the handle too quick and launch first you'll find it's kind of a really weak stroke you're not able to get your leg drive in there properly and your elbows are bending too soon so anyway get the timing right of that foot press and the connection with the flywheel. You can start picking up pace a little bit, get a little bit closer towards 2K plus 20 pace. 2K training pace description is given in the description, funnily enough, to this workout video. So if you don't know what I'm on about, go check it on the YouTube video. Two more strokes, then we're gonna put one foot on the floor, or the grass in my case and then carry on rowing with just one leg strapped in. Point here is that you're still trying to maintain the same body angles and stuff. Good technique, except you're just working on the balance of just one leg strapped in. One more, swap feet. It just mixes up the warm-up a little bit as well, but helps with... If you're a little bit tight for compression to the front of the machine, then just having one leg in the foot straps can help to free you up a bit. 
Right, one more here. Both feet in, legs straight. Then just roll with your back and arms. Hello, Mr. Butterfly. <laughs> Whoa, I've got a really tight lower back today. Ow. This is a good one just for easing things up. I can already feel it easing up. But also for teaching you to generate some power with that swing over your back, over your hips. Sorry. Okay, roll into the front with the arm straight, forward lean, and just push out with the legs. Not too strong, because what you're trying to work on here is that timing between your feet and the flywheel, but also holding that forward lean and arm straight as you drive. If you push too hard, you might mess with that kind of learning point. Okay, two more. We'll fit in another one, won't we? Yeah. Ooh. Right. Not the most technique infused warm up in terms of what I'm talking about, but that's because we've got 40 minutes ahead of us today. And frankly, I'm going to be talking technique. I think I've set the camera a little bit too far behind me. I'm feeling I'm having to get an oblique workout here. Anyway, keep on moving up and down the rail, have a quick drink, and I'll describe one more time what it is we're doing today. Okay then, so today's workout is going to be a 40 minute row, and we're going to change stroke rate every four minutes. We're going to go 18, 20, 22, 20, 18, and then we're going to go 18, 20, 22, 20, 18 again. So when you change every four minutes, that works out as 40 minutes. Now pace-wise, you're going to do the 18 at round about 2k plus 20, then the 20 strokes per minute at round about 2k plus 18, and the 22s at round about 2k plus 16 or 17. But like I said, if you want to back off a couple of seconds in order to make this a nice recovery workout then please do okay i'm just gonna see how i feel today and if i'm gonna start doing 2k plus 22 for the 18s that's totally cool by me okay slower is better on this kind of a workout obviously not ridiculously slow that's just stupid but anyway so let's get into this i get the feeling we're gonna get company today you won't see them but i get the feeling judging by the sound of ladders in the distance that the window cleaners are going to turn up so if I suddenly shut up for a while, it's because I'm too embarrassed to talk while the guy's around <laughs> cleaning the windows. So here we go then. We're going to do 18 strokes a minute at 2k plus 20-ish to start in three, two, one, go. Now, if you're looking at this as a effort level out of 10, then you really are looking at five or six out of 10 here for these 18 strokes a minute and if anything when you get up to the 20s they might rise up to 6 out of 10 the 22s may get up to like 6.5 but really today should be a low intensity low heart rate workout this is going to give you a chance and space to work on your technique. To just slow down a bit. Remember that rowing isn't all about how fast can you go? How much can you push yourself? There's also this side of training which is just about developing your foundations, your foundations of technique and the foundation of your fitness. And that's why these sessions are so important because a 40 minute row like this, although maybe not near the pace that you might be doing a 10k row at is really going to give you the fitness that you need in order to be able to row that 10k as fast as you want so say you wanted to row a 10k in exactly 40 minutes 
which would be a pace of two minutes per 500 meters. But every time you try it, you get to run about 7,000 meters in and your fitness just goes kaput on you and you have to back off, slow down, or worse, stop. Well, continuing and just coming back to that 10K time and time again, trying to get further and further each time, is one way to do it. But it's quite a slow way to do it and it can be quite soul destroying too. Every time you miss it, that feeling of, I still can't do it. Whereas, if you slowed right down to around about two minutes 10 pace, and just did it at 18 strokes a minute, or 20 strokes a minute, you'll find you'll get to the end and you'll just drive in that core fitness. Is my maths right there for 2K plus 10? I think so, at 18, yeah. Or, sorry, two minutes plus 10, if that's your goal. Okay, two strokes. One more. And let's go up to 20 strokes a minute. Which is not really a huge difference. Maybe a tiny bit more of a push from your legs in order to just take an extra little squirt of stroke rate and that little extra little squirt over the course of a minute will lead to two strokes. And because you're pushing a tiny bit harder and taking an extra two strokes per minute, you'll see, hopefully, that without even needing to think about it much, your pace has gone up by two seconds. Which isn't much, but the point of this session isn't pace. So, really, these stroke rate and pace changes are just there to keep things interesting. It would be just as effective to lock into 40 minutes straight at 20 strokes per minute. But I've split this up into four minute chunks just to keep things interesting for you. Because that's what I'm like. I mean, if you're ever stuck looking for what shall I do today, just strap in, put 30, 30 minutes on the monitor and row it at 20 strokes per minute and 2K plus 18 pace because that row will be your friend for your whole rowing career. It'll make you stronger, faster, because of the power it gives you and the time to work on technique. And that is a huge part of it, is that by slowing down the stroke rate, and not chasing pace. You're given the room to work on your technique. 
to make sure that when you eventually do want to go hard and fast and your brain is too busy concentrating on speed you've kind of dialed in an automatic stroke it's like your default you ground in a good stroke okay two more strokes and we're up to 22s here we go just a little bit more of a push from the legs which makes a faster drive speed and as a result if you have a nice fluid rhythm to your stroke you should find a tiny little bit, bit faster recovery too and that should be all it takes to get you up to 22 strokes per minute and again because you are pushing a little bit harder with the legs and taking two more strokes per minute you should find you're round about two seconds faster than you were before and notice when I'm talking about pace and power I'm talking about leg push not once have I said pull harder with the arms in order to go faster that's because at least 60% of your power should be coming from that push with your legs yes you need to connect that power through your arms into your hands and as you increase power from your legs you'll feel more what's the right word? tension oh here we go told you hi there hope you don't mind me rowing and talking while you're cleaning <laughs> uh, where was I? hi so you push harder with your legs and the resulting force that goes through your body increases the amount of force that goes through your arms and your hands into the handle should we call that tension? power? newtons? like watts but the point is as you push with your legs no matter what stroke rate you're doing you are hanging off the handle okay so think about that hang as the power goes through as you push in more to go faster that hang feels more hangy <laughs> more power more tension more but you're not pulling any harder with your arms you're not fighting against it you're just channeling that power from your feet through your arms into your hands okay first slow down coming up one more stroke here we go down to 20 strokes a minute so here you should notice the change in rhythm going down from 22 to 20 and it might take you 10 strokes or so 
to get to the right pace again. But don't worry about it. You can have a couple of speed wobbles on today's session. Especially on the way back down these great pyramids. But hopefully, a minute in, you are 20 strokes a minute and 2k plus 18 pace. So, anyway, you may also feel slightly less of a hang off the handle now because you're not putting in as much force and that's really what it comes down to I'm not grabbing the handle in a death grip from the front of the machine and trying to pull it back what I'm trying to do is push the machine away with my feet in the right position that I'm then hanging off the handle and putting that leg power into the machine without my back arms or hands fighting that power and that all comes down to your body angle at the front of the machine as you put in the power and what you're doing with your arms so first up make sure you're leaning in to the front of the machine into a one o'clock position is that them seagulls again? <laughs> uh, yeah, so lean in, one o'clock position on the clock face, and that lets the power go up through your back instead of through your lower back if you are leaning backwards at the start. And then your arms want them to be straight with your fingers like hooks over the handle. And all that does is it sends the power up through your body in a straight line into the handle without your massive biceps and stuff fighting against the power. Fight the power! Two more strokes, and let's ease off again to 18 strokes a minute, and slow down by another one or two seconds. So you're back to your starting pace of around about 2k plus 20. Let's be careful, I've spotted that as I've slowed down, I've got lazy and I'm hovering at the front of the machine, getting the timing completely wrong. So instead of taking longer to recover, I'm recovering at the same pace, but then holding the front of the stroke before I drive which because of the compression as I come into the front means my big old backside goes scooting away from underneath me so back to what we were doing in the warm-up practice coming in and then push with the feet 
so your backside only moves as you drive with the legs and connect the handle to the flywheel and see it only took me like 18 minutes to completely forget that and so that's why we spend so much time training together doing stuff like this is to work on your default stroke being one that has the right timing and stuff because trust me in a 2k when you're breathing out your ears you're not going to be thinking about timing thank you so much you have a safe day there you go got a figure he thinks I'm a lunatic but he still gets paid for washing for cleaning my windows so so yeah just think about that timing and keeping those arms straight and not over leaning into the front and that's what I was doing just then I was coming forwards extra lean and that sent my backside away from underneath me and I lost a whole bunch of power whereas if I think about setting up into the right position and then recovering all is good I'm right on pace there's no butt scoot and I'm taking a good amount of time to recover because remember this part of the stroke isn't called recovery for nothing you use it to recover right we're not changing in the next one remember we're holding 18 for another 4 minutes so we plateaued at the bottom of our mountains with two sets of 18 and then we're going to go up again then down again then we're done and throwing in these two 18 chunks should really help keep you in that lower heart rate zone where you're not going to be blowing your energy system I mean I'm talking about this in terms of it being on the 10k plan which means week three session two right now week three session one was really tough still not a max session but especially when I did it two days in a row those three minute harder chunks felt tough so energy system will be depleted for anybody who's even done week 3 session 1 once and then week 3 session 3 is another top workout which isn't top the whole way through because of how session one was but it's back to that push pace workout where you start off slow and then end up fast and it should push you to the brink 
I know it did for me the first time around. So, that's why week one, session one was as tough as it was, because week three, session three, spends the first kind of 25 minutes quite manageable. Then it's only the last 15 minutes where it really tips the scales. Okay, minutes ago on this 18, I remember going back to recovery. As you pull in the handle to your chest to finish the stroke, release it in the same rhythm that you brought it in at. So you go in, out, and that gets the handle away, helps to trigger your forward lean, and then Especially at these rates, you can wait. Take your time for your rock to get right into that position. Hands over your knees, body rock into one o'clock, and then you bend your knees. Okay, up to 20 strokes a minute from now. Two seconds faster again. So these lower stroke rates give you the time to really concentrate on hands away, body rock, then bend your knees. The faster the stroke rate, the quicker the, the motion of arms away, forward rock, and knee bend happens. So you don't really get the time to slow down and focus on it. But the timing needs to remain the same. It's just that this stroke rate, you can slow down, concentrate, and grind it in to your muscle memory so that when you are going faster this is just naturally what you're doing and there's no need to drop the handle you'll see a lot of people drop the handle raise it at the front drop the handle maybe you've been taught to scrape it down your knees as a way to concentrate on what I'm saying about the recovery because you can't bend your knees too soon if the handle is meant to be scraping down your legs but once you've fixed that issue stop doing it there will be an element for on the water rowers where they will tap down as though getting the oar out of the water and then a slight rise at the front to put the oar back in the water but it's only really as much as going under a table and then over a table, under, over, under, over. You're not scraping down your legs. And the reason I suggest not doing it, unless you have to, is that that scrape down can collapse your back make you over lean and then the reverse is true that as 
you bring the handle back up at the front, you lean back too soon. So, if you can think about keeping the handle at a relatively level flight. Nice and neutral at the front. And then finish at sternum height at the back. Okay, two strokes, one more. Back up to 22 for the last time. Just a tiny bit more push from your legs. So all it takes, remember, we're not trying to gun it today. I certainly don't want you going past 2K plus 16. If you're down at plus 14, and ease up. This is a recovery fitness building workout. And if you're going too fast, you're going to undo the benefits of it. There's so many bees floating around today. I think it's been raining for like a week or so and then the past three days have been like this I think it's kind of woken up the bees and the butterflies it's lovely although garden wise all the plants and flowers that we put in to try to attract bees and butterflies they're on the last legs okay so we've done drive with that forward lean straight arms pushing the machine away from you then you wait until your leg drive is about halfway through and that's when you swing over your back from a 1 o'clock to 11 o'clock position to be honest that swing takes care of itself what you need to think about is delaying it until your legs are halfway through the stroke and then making sure you don't go too far back so as you're looking at me you only want to go into a 11 o'clock lean one more minute at 22 and then get your legs down finish your leg drive right before your backswing finishes and as your arms come in your arms you don't pull at the front of the machine like I've already told you you wait until just after your backswing and then you top up the power with that powerful finish of the handle shoulder blades squeeze together elbows through your sides two more strokes one more and we're down to 20s again here we go Now, what do you do with your elbows? I prefer them to come straight through with a tiny 
flare out of my elbows designed just to keep my wrists flat as my elbows go through again on the water rowers maybe used to having a much more chicken wing finish but even demonstrating it there I could feel it hitting my biceps and my forearms and my delts neither of which or none of which are as strong as my lats which come into play first if I send my elbows straight through and then biceps, delts and forearms come into play on top of them not instead of okay two more minutes can I adjust my heart rate strap again having that issue again where I've lost a little bit of girth around my stomach and it's only during a row that I realise around my chest more like that I realise my chest strap is too loose so I'll tighten it after this but in the meantime the strap's working its way down to my belly button Whew. I mean there's worse things to complain about oh woe is me all the training I'm doing and the healthy eating that's designed to make me get back to racing weight and shape it's working oh no <laughs> it's funny how it comes in spurts though it's like any of you that have kids you notice they have growth spurts as they grow up funnily enough and that still happens with me for the weight loss thing where I'll be like a plateau for a couple of weeks and then I'll suddenly lose an entire kilo and like a percent of body fat three two one here we go back down to 18 for the last four minutes of today's workout <sighs> could well just be because this is <laughs> the third day rowing outside in the heat I've just turn myself into a California raisin with no fluid in me you could chop me up and make a nice raisin and rum cake out of me raisin and rum or rum and raisin or frankly chocolate <laughs> That's my big, my biggest weakness I've discovered is just biscuits, particularly chocolate biscuits. If you gave me a just a chunk of like dairy milk, milk chocolate, I'd eat it. But 
wouldn't feel particularly satisfied. Whereas if you gave me a packet of chocolate covered digestives, or even better, a Twix, oh, then leave me around too many of them. And Fat John will soon be back. I think that's where my issue with alcohol lies. It's not the booze itself, it's the problem. It's the fact that the restraint part of me that doesn't eat chocolate biscuits and things. <clears throat> if I've had a couple of glasses of wine or beer, that restraint part goes to sleep. And the deep down large person desperate to claw its way out of me gets to take over and eats everything <laughs> much like my training I am all or nothing so give me a packet of six mini Twixes while I'm sitting watching television and 9.9 .9 times out of 10 they'll be gone if I've been drinking so stop drinking stop overeating and it turns out because I'm on low alcohol beer now actually it was the taste and the ritual of drinking beer that I liked not the actual alcohol last stroke Whew. that huge diversion in chat at the end let's glide home beautifully so that's alright so 9,707 metres for me over those four minute chunks times 10, 40 minutes. I do kind of, looking at most people's results, I average out a 10k to be like 40 minutes. May take you 50, may take you an hour, don't worry about it. But I kind of base things around that. Basically I base everything around the entire world being able to row at any distance, at any pace at two minutes per 500 meters. That way it gives it a little bit of equality to everybody. But this is why your actual training pace is based on your 2K. So you row a 2000 meter time trial, divide by four, that gives you your 2K training pace. And so yours might be 140. So your average is one minute 40 to cover every 500 meters across the 2K. Mine right now is 145, but when we both slow down by 20 seconds, as a kind of a pie chart proportion of what you're capable of, we're both exactly the same. Same goes for someone whose 2K time is like 240, their average. When they back off 20 seconds, it's kind of the same proportion compared to what they're capable of. Oh, I think that's my grocery service, grocery shop here, Tesco's here. So I'm gonna say a quick, oh no, we can't. I'm gonna be coming right back for a two minute cooldown. <laughs> Ooh, right, I'm back. <laughs> Anyone with a little bit more professionalism in them, professionalism in them, oh, we'll probably go back and kind of fake the end of that and do it again, but not me. I've got no professionalism. I'm just going to let, let, that be a, let that be an error and we can pick up from there. Right, let's do a two minute cool down. Oh. Whew. Ready? I can do around about 18 strokes a minute again. I know, I know, I know. You've been doing lots of 18s, but so there's another. Anyway, three, two, one, go. Oh, of course, I've cooled right down now after the uh, friendly Tesco delivery driver came and brought my food to me. 
something that we started up doing because of the whole, you know, the whole thing. But it actually worked out, it's quite convenient, especially because I'm still working from home. We should have to go to the shops. Anyway, less of Tesco, more of more of you. So pace-wise for this cool down, just gradually ease down. I mean it's not been that tough a road today anyway, so this is really just more about making sure that you spend time and kind of get used to always doing a cool down. Really it's the tougher rows that kind of demand a cool down in terms of your muscles and even your mental state. As I just discovered by having to put all my shopping away, you can do a session like today's one and not cool down and not really suffer any ill consequences, but it's the habit. That's why I always have a cool down in all of these sessions and I really do suggest that you do them along with me. And then when we're done and I'm talking away to you, that's time to stretch, pack up your stuff. Which is, well packing up your stuff is obviously important. But stretching out your hamstrings, your shoulders, your quads, maybe even your biceps and triceps. Just make sure that you're good to go the next day, really. One more stroke from me. So you either carry on rowing or climb off, find somewhere to stretch while I just say goodbye. Ah, <sighs> ooh. My wee pinky toes begin to suffer. I've had to hide my feet from me through the water ball. <sighs> anyway, so it's the sound of lawnmowers in the background, you know. It's summer, the sun's out and it's gorgeous. You can't really see how blue the sky is and stuff, can you? Because you've just got a fence where the playhouse used to be. That's the downside of kids growing up. Remember I was saying about the, the growth spurts that kids have? They grow up. So when you buy this lovely little cute little pink playhouse for them and you see them and they fit in and it's oh, it's so beautiful, it's so lovely. And then they turn 11, they start high school and they're huge and, well not huge, that's unfair. But she's, my oldest one's going up to there on me now. I'm just like, oh, when did you grow? So anyway, right, as being there seems to be engines running everywhere now, I'm just going to cut this one short because you don't really want to be listening to whatever that is and whatever compressor that is in the background. There's a circular saw going over there and I think some over there there's a lawnmower. So I hope you enjoyed rowing with me in the sun again today. Um, it really was the perfect session for me after doing two versions of the week three session one. If you have been following the 10K plan and this was um, your recovery row after doing week three session one, I hope you found it as useful as I did. I certainly, like I said, needed it and I'm certainly gonna need it ahead of doing the 40 minute push pace again. So remember the duration is up there a little bit more for a lot of the rows in this 10K plan because basically you have to get used to rowing a little bit more. There's no point just doing these 20 minute fast sessions all the time when you're actually needing to learn how to be good at rowing um, a 10K over 40. There's another engine uh, and, uh, over 40 minutes plus. So anyway, so thanks so much. Make sure and leave me a comment or a message or whatever. Um, uh, in fact, we'll have hashtag today can be engine because that's actually quite applicable to what we're doing today. We, we were building our own engine and now we're being surrounded by engines. See, it's like, hey man, it's all, it's quantum baby. It's all rolling into itself. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. The hashtag, if you are going to leave a comment on the YouTube channel or the podcast or on Facebook is engine, just so that we can all go, ah, you made it this far through the video. So anyway, thank you so much. I think that's, so is that three times I've thanked you now? I'll do it again. Thank you so much. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, be well, bye-bye.